arm and be fearless. Come to the foot of Calvary. There is redemption for every affliction here at the foot of Calvary. To come and be chainless, come and be free. Good morning everyone, my name is Jean. Welcome to Huntington Shire Community Church's online service. It's good to be with you this morning. Now last week we started our new series on the fruit of the Spirit and Tim brought us some thoughts on joy. This morning Stephen will be speaking about peace. 
there will also be an opportunity later to take communion together. And I pray that not only will we hear about peace, but we will experience it in our lives. Because Jesus said in John 14, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So let's start our service by bringing our offerings of praise and worship. Worship our King, 
And this was a glimpse of Forest Church last Sunday, where we gathered Hinchinbrook Park, space to connect, learn, play, worship. Absolutely fantastic morning. One thing that we've really missed over lockdown has been the ability and the opportunity to come together as God's family into his presence. And this is what Filling Station is all about. It gathers our scattered senses and it says we're going into one place together to be with God, to just soak up his amazing love and his presence. And I just want to invite any that would love to come down on sun- next Sunday to Fitting Station. It's a really relaxed, unpressured space where you can just come and uh, f- f- meet with others uh, to pray together, uh, to receive prayer, just to sit and to be still, uh, to listen for God's voice, to have communion um, and uh, to take some space out in the busyness of our week to replenish. Join us next Sunday morning, 10 o'clock at Fing Station.
is on the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we come to peace. But first, I want to share a story with you. Wasn't that great? I shared that story of Horatio and Anna Spafford because it illustrates beautifully what I believe it is to have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding in our lives. The biblical concept of peace in the Greek erene is inclusive of life without conflict as well as wholeness and harmony with God and others. A life of peace is safe and secure both physically and mentally. To you know, most of us, faced with the trials and tragedies that the Spaffords faced, would perhaps have lost hope and certainly been tempted to give up. But the peace they experienced, and that we can have in our lives too, is the result of allowing Holy Spirit to work in our hearts and minds. Do you know, when we have that peace, we're free from fear and worry about finances, about our safety, our salvation, and our eternal life. This is the peace that comes even when our circumstances are far from tranquil. Isaiah 26 and verse 3, uh, talking of God, says, You, God, will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. God created us and blesses us and keeps us in the palm of his hand, keeping us in perfect peace. Now, back in our Easter series, we heard how first we were God's enemies because of our sin, how Christ died for us while we were still sinners, 
and how that brought us peace with the Father. And securing that peace is through steadfast minds, minds that are firm and don't waver. Now, that's not to say they're fixed and inflexible, but it means they know God and what he expects. They're not tossed about in their thinking and beliefs by the latest fad. They are totally focused on listening to God and doing what he says. The only way to cultivate a steadfast mind is through total trust in God. Now, Horatio and Anna could both have given way under the pressure of their tragedies, but despite everything, for them God remained on his throne, blessing and keeping them. They remained steadfast, and so God was able to use them to accomplish his plans. In John 14 and verse 21, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You know, Jesus is saying that the peace he gives us is different from, what the, from the peace that the world would give us. For us to develop peace in our lives, I think I, I want to share five biblical steps that I believe we can take. First P is for pray. Pray about everything. Philippians 4 and verses 6 and 7 say, Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Just like Horatio and Anna. Now notice it says everything. We pray about everything for the things that we've messed up uh, in the past. We pray for forgiveness of our sins uh, and for the things that, that we worry about in the future. We pray for guidance, for the things that we're happy about. We pray to give thanks. It says, when you do that, when you pray, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. Your know, life is full of things to worry about, but most, probably 90% of the things we worry about never happen. And the rest, the other 10% of the things we worry about, are usually beyond our control. So it's meaningless to worry about the things we cannot change. So, spend the time for worry in prayer, and uh, we will have peace. Second, E is for enjoy beauty. Now, all those great things in Philippians 4, verses 8 and 9, I'm calling beauty. And it says, finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing... Whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about those things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, this is Paul, and the God of peace will be with you. Those beautiful things, I, I use beauty to summarise all those good included in, in, in those verses. So we go to the theatre or the cinema or the gallery to enjoy beauty. We go to the park or walk in nature to enjoy beauty. We listen to music or attend a concert or play an instrument to enjoy beauty. And we read the Bible to enjoy beauty. Enjoying beauty, especially in nature, not only helps us appreciate God's handiwork, but also makes us think about what God can do for us instead of how this world can harm and destroy us. So, enjoy beauty. Think about the things that are true and don't think about the things that aren't true. Think about the things that are honourable, that is, that are good and virtuous and decent, rather than the things that are not. And so on. And that way we will discover that God's peace is with us. Next, A is for accept God's gift of peace. John 14 and uh, verse 27 says, Jesus says he leaves us his peace as a gift, and all we have to do is accept it, to claim it. Do you know, one of the reasons we don't have peace is that we look for it in all the wrong places. We think money can give us peace, so we try to find ways to accumulate money. Jim Carrey, the actor, was recently being interviewed, and he talked about how poor he was when he started out in Hollywood, and how he worked really, really hard to become successful. And the interviewer asked him, so now you have a lot of money, are you happy? And you know, Jim Carrey laughed and he said, you know, anyone who, who thinks money can make him happy does not yet have money. So in the same way, anyone who thinks position, power and prestige can bring peace is delusional. The good news is that true peace is not so hard to get. 
All we have to do is to accept it as God's gift. Next C is for conquer your fear. We fear when we feel weak and we don't have someone to guide or guard us. In other words, we have fear when we don't have the presence of God. Because in such times, we are like sheep without a shepherd. You know, Jesus knew his disciples would be afraid after he left them. And that's why he said, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. He wanted them to understand that although he wasn't with them physically, he would be with them spiritually through Holy Spirit. And it's the same for us. John 14 and verse 23 says, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. That's a great promise for all of us. The Bible tells us God will make his home with us, and if God is with us, we will be able to say, like David, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. We will have peace because God's peace will be with us. And E is for emulate the saints. You know, we don't have enough time in our lives to learn everything we need to learn. But you know, one of the, the great shortcuts is, in growing faster is to emulate or to learn from those who have been there and done that. <laughs> Got the t-shirt. And that's why Paul says in Philippians 4 and verse 9, keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. He's saying, look at me, learn from me. Do as I do because I learned from Jesus and I do as he did. So when we read the Bible, we learn from the saints, whether it's David or Moses, Joseph, Paul, Peter, the apostles, and of course Jesus ourself, the ultimate, uh, himself the ultimate model of peace. We can also learn from the saints outside the Bible, from Christian biographies and, and from stories like that of Horatio and Anna Spafford. In Hebrews, we're reminded we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. So, to recap, our call to action today is pray about everything. Enjoy beauty. Accept God's gift of peace. Conquer your fear and emulate the saints. Now, as we come together to take communion, I want to read a bit what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2. He says, Remember that at that time he was separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship of Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, one new man from two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross. Through his sacrifice on the cross, we have forgiveness of our sins, but also we have peace with God. What a wonderful thought that we not only can have our sins forgiven, but we can have peace with God. All because of what Jesus did on the cross on our behalf, something that we couldn't do ourselves, but he did it for us because of his love for us. And in 1 Corinthians we read, Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that Jesus on the same day, on the same night, when, which, in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We take the bread as a symbol of the body of Jesus 
that was broken, that was marred, that was battered and bruised. Why? Because he loved us enough to die for us. So as we take some of the bread, let us remember what Jesus went through so that we could have our sins forgiven, so that we could have peace with God. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. As we take the wine, Jesus is budding but blood that was actually shed for us. Poured out, poured out as a sacrifice for us. And so let us, as we drink that, thank him for all that he accomplished on the cross on our behalf. Let's pray. Jesus, we really, really, really do thank you for what you did for us on the cross. We couldn't save ourselves, we couldn't even improve ourselves, and yet you loved us so much you were willing to die on our behalf so that we not only could have our sins forgiven, but also we can have peace with God. And Lord, I just ask that, Lord, as we go through day by day by day, that we will remember the sacrifice you made for us, that we won't take it for granted. And it won't be just saying, oh, that's something that we do once in a while. But it will be something that we remember and we're thankful for. Because of the sacrifice on the cross, we are here now, today, together, being able to celebrate and to remember what you've done for us. So Lord, thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for what you did for us. And I just pray, Father, that we will be those, Lord, that not only have our sins forgiven, but we will be those, Lord, that will tell others how they can have their sins forgiven as well and how they can have peace with God, especially in this world where everything's all upside down, just to have peace with you, Lord is marvellous. So I say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. In the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light so from heaven To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father Praise the Son Praise the Spirit 
that song was moved for good For the Lamb that conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of love Shall not kneel, shall not fade Thank you for being with us this morning. And I pray that not only have we been blessed today, but that we've also learned something about peace that will help us through the week. Now next week we continue with our series, The Fruit of the Spirit, and Richard will be speaking on patience. And also remember that you're welcome to join us at the filling station at 83A next Sunday. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds this week through Jesus Christ. Amen. you